it has been more than two years since we've seen our favorite motherboard, the MSI B550M Motar Wi-Fi. With the launch of Ryzen 7000, we now have this new MSI B650M Motar Wi-Fi. How has it evolved from the B550M? Let's take a dive into this new motherboard. Hey tech people, Rema Tan here and welcome back to my channel. I'm just going to casually leave this B550M Motar over here. Okay, unboxing time! Right off the bat, that's the motherboard. Below it, you have an additional M.2 locker if you want to have multiple SSDs, stickers to add some blink to the else black and white motherboard, sticker labels which can come in handy, a quick install guide, EU regulatory notice, SATA cables, and the Wi-Fi antenna. MSI is also probably going green with this new motherboard. If you want the full manual, you can scan the QR code on the quick install guide or download the manual from the motherboard's website. Thankfully, the B650M is not green. Most of the components are black with a hint of silvery white on a full black PCB. If you want RGB, you can get those from your RAM, your CPU cooler, case fans, or your graphics cards. The B650M is slightly heavier than the B550M, which I think is partly due to the thicker VR heatsinks as well as the thicker PCB. There are also more additions coming for Ryzen 7000, which I will get to in a bit. As this is a motherboard for Ryzen 7000, this B650M uses the new LGA 1780 socket, has 4 DDR5 RAM slots, yeah please don't use your DDR4 RAM here, as well as a difficult to remove socket backplate. In addition, unlike the B550M motor, the B650M has 2 CPU power in. I guess you still may be able to get away if you plug in one 8 pin. But since there are two, just plug in both to be safe. Anyway, I doubt you'll buy a 7900X or a 7950X for a motherboard like this. You will probably get a 7600X or at most a 7700X. Going down, you can now see that both M.2 slots have heat shields. As both of these slots are Gen 4.0 X4, it's good to know there's enough heat dissipation for both SSDs if you want to use both M.2 slots. How about your graphics cards? Without a doubt, you will use this first slot which is PCIe 4.0 x16. You also have one Gen 3.0 x1 slot and another Gen 4 x16 slot operating at x4 speed at the bottom. This is a bit of a letdown coming from the B580M motor. If you want to use the bottom slot, you can't use a typical GPU like this RX 6700 XT. Most of these typical GPUs are more than 2.5 slots thick, so you end up carving the bottom slot if you were to plug in such a GPU. With the B550M, because of the additional X1 slot as well as the gap between the slots, you will still be able to use the bottom slot if you were to use this typical GPU. And another thing is, if you ever, ever need to remove the CMOS battery because of some weird overclock which you have done, there's also some inconvenience here. As the CMOS battery is next to the first M.2 slot, you will have to remove the GPU first before you can access the CMOS battery. You also see the same issue on the B550M, which is now carried forward to this B650M. But this is just a minor inconvenience, so hopefully shorting your CMOS jumper on your motherboard will be enough. But on the flip side, if you want to have two NVMe SSDs on this new motherboard, you don't have to worry about the other slots turning off. You will have access to all PCI slots as well as no halving of speeds on the PCI slots and SATA ports. Okay next, I would like to point out some haters which you may want to know. First, to power your CPU coolers, the CPU fan and pump heaters are now over here. Unlike the B550 where the pump heater tends to be on the top right, now you have a shorter routing distance for your AIOs for the block wire. It will look neater especially if the cable is at the bottom and you can tuck the wire around here. As this B650 motherboard does not have any RGB, you can add RGB effects using other components. Coming for the B550 which has two ARGB and one RGB header, this B650 comes with one more RGB header if you want something like more RGB strips. How about your case fans? Coming from the B550M, the fan header for the intake fans is around the same location. But now, you have a more conveniently placed header next to this first M.2 slot. You can use this header for your exhaust fan if you want to have a shorter cable routing distance compared to the header at the bottom. You decide. For USB, nothing has changed. Front type C, USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0 at the bottom. But you get more USB ports at the back. In lieu of a PS2 and a Type-C 10GB port on the B550M, 
you have a type c 20 gig port on the b650 you also get two more 5 gig ports and two more 10 gig type a ports and also as this is a new gen board this b650 supports wi-fi 6e as compared to the b550 which only supports wi-fi 6. okay so let's just do a simple power on this motherboard to see if there's any led or none like the b550m motor wi-fi components i have amd ryzen 7700x 32 gigs G skill with JAWS S5, 3200 megahertz. My test SSD, the Samsung 980 Pro. Cooler, I'm gonna go with the Wave Prism to see how the RGB effects work on the new MSI Dragon Center or MSI Center. And open this thing, take off the bracket cover. Okay, now we put in the CPU. Okay, close it. Right. Okay, before we mount our CPU cooler, let's first take care of the SSD and RAM. We're gonna use the first M.2 slot. Okay, so this guy really has the M.2 locker. I need to see how to make this one. I've never used this board before. Is it even in? All right, it's finally in. <laughs> Okay, make sure to remove the heat shield plastic cover. Okay, just leave it one side because I have to give this board back to MSI. To mount the cooler, we have to remove the socket retention brackets. Okay, this is my bad. I forgot that Wave Prism makes use of the retention clips, so I have to put it back. <laughs> okay, let's press this thing down. Alright. Okay, then we put the CPU fan wire. I've decided to change to some RGB RAM, so this is the GSQ Z5 RGB. Change to a GPU with RGB, this is the 1660Ti Gaming Z. All set up. Okay, so you can see after we power on, there's no RGB on the motherboard. The motherboard is still fully black. All of the RGB effects come from the rest of the PC components. Okay, based on what I've seen so far, this B650 motor is a pleasant upgrade over the B550M motor. Not including the compulsory AM5 suite that we see on the new motherboards such as DDR5 RAM and the new socket, you will get better connectivity in the form of more USB slots, better hidden locations as well as more protected PCIe slots. However, if you do need to use the last PCIe slot, this B650 motor may be a slight inconvenience for you. The slot arrangement on a B580 motor is better in this aspect. Because of the additional X1 slot as well as the spacings between the slots, you can put a GPU and another PCI device on the bottom slot. Overall, it's a well-built motherboard, but the price is on the high side for a mid-range motherboard. But that said, getting the Ryzen 7000 will take a load off your wallet anyway. So, if Ryzen 7000 is not your thing, the B580M motor is still a very relevant and reliable motherboard if you want to get older gen CPUs. Do check out our review of the B5TM motor if you want to buy a motherboard for that category. With that, thank you for watching and goodbye.